gang. Um, so this is probably, well, for the time being, this will be, well, it's only the second one, but it'll be the last of these um, driving time, time time things when I don't feel like I have to speak quietly because I'm not in my house and nobody's listening to me. So I'm driving back to Birmingham again and I've got my, uh, I've got my dirt in the back once again um, and uh, I have one more day left in this job tomorrow and then after that on Monday it's Thursday today I'm flying back to Ireland for Christmas and for the uh, for a while I don't know when I can go back I don't have a flight back book and I have no job booked and um, we're currently for historians in the phase of Corona where um, in and out of lockdown, and uh, a vaccine is is about, but it'll take a while to distribute it, let alone for it to affect our genes, to get into the uh, heart of things and um, stop us from being struck down by the uh, horror of coronavirus. Um, so lots of people are comparing Christmas this year to Christmas in 1940, 1941, 42, 43, 44, um, which I suppose I mean, it's closer than we normally are. But you know, if I if I step up my front door and, and, and take five steps to the east, then I guess I'm closer than I normally am to Egypt, southeast. Um, and it's true, but it's not necessarily a point one would normally make. Uh, so yeah, I'm on the motorway. It's a grey day today. Um, there's a van in front of me. LKW Walter. Uh, whatever that stands for. Luke Kelly wishes Walter. What does he wish him? The best, the worst, the best of times, the worst of times. Um, so my last few uh, videos, of course, have been about me reading um, about the Trans-Siberian Express, although I haven't gotten there yet, and I don't know if I, I don't know if I ever will. To be honest, to be honest, I found it difficult to edit. In that, I'm not entirely sure. It's interesting, and they're very long, and people don't seem to um, be too keen on me babbling. I'm not too keen on it. There's interesting stuff that happens. You know, the train itself is interesting. There's an exciting encounter with a Chinese border border guard. But I mean, I could just read that bit, or not read at all. I could just tell you the story and um, but we'll have more time for that next year when I don't have a job and I have more free time um, and less money not that I have a lot of money I guess it'll be easier to do that um, god it's a grey day the rain seems grey like not clear but grey like it's made of concrete it's a fish supplies van passing by they'll be in great demand um, when all the fish things happen that they're having a massive argument about at the moment with the EU, uh, bloody Boris and all of that. Um, yeah, uh, what's what's on? What's happening? What's happened to me? So I've uh, nothing has happened. I've been working. I watched the latest series of The Crown. Um, thought it was very good. I'm not a Republican. I'm not. I am a Republican. I'm not a monarchist by any means shape or form. I think the idea of monarchy is um, outdated by a great extent. The idea of having people in your society who are better than you because of their birth, I think is uh, counter, it's counterproductive when it comes to leading to an, an equal society, especially in some places as stratified and accent mad as, as Great Britain, the UK, the United Kingdom. Um, so I think, you know, that belongs in the 16th century, you know, they should have, the French had the right idea. I mean, I don't think they should decapitate poor Liz. I mean, she seems fine, doesn't she? She seems fine, she's, she's, she's grand, she's grand, but the idea of it, of these people, but it's inheritance, isn't it? So it goes right into the heart of inheritance. Um, and I don't think that should be a thing either. I think inheritance should be limited to a, um, a specific amount and then the rest of it, property, all of that is sold and the money is given to the state, you know. We shouldn't be holding on to things like massive mansions and uh, giving the next generation a leg up 
when it comes to controlling other people because this is not fair in the next generation of new human beings who are coming up you know like third world countries who are now second world countries and now first world countries they have to contend with these these assholes that have been in power for for generations and then and you know i mean look at britain look at britain look at the uk they think that they're right and correct by dint of literally nothing literally nothing well nothing their past and their own sense of invincibility and power you know it's not based on any actual objectifiable fact that exists in the world we live in today but it's based on their own sense of self-esteem their own cockiness you know and nobody likes a cock well some people like a cock i guess it depends i'm not going to get into that cockiness ego smugness you know it shouldn't be a thing one needs a certain amount of ego to exist in the world but if you're going to go into international relations having said i mean look the british parliament declared that they were going to break international law while negotiating with the eu the deal they were already saying they were going to break you know why would the eu be like okay cool you know it's like it's like, I don't know, it's like you have a man who's going to build you a house and he tells you, all of my houses, you know, I, I set a bomb in the, in the walls um, so that when you when you move in, the, the fireplace explodes outwards and shrapnel moves in slow motion across the living room and it eviscerates anyone watching the Queen's speech. And, um, and then he goes, would you like to buy a house? And then he expects you to say, yes, build me a house, crazy bomb man. But that's what they've done and now the latest thing is that they've said to the EU we promise you know I will make a concession our concession to you to get what we want which is fishing rights and uh, sovereignty blah blah all of that our concession to you is that we won't break international law all right you know, we're not going to break the law this is our concession what do you think what do you think are you going to give it I mean, we've made a big concession there we're we we're born criminals and we're not going to commit crime against you specifically so why would you even trust that they were going to hold true to that you wouldn't so yeah britain is a massive example of why things like inheritance and um, nepotism you know in the end it doesn't get you anywhere i mean it gets you somewhere if you're the people who are being directly impacted by nepotism but not not for the world or people or the majority of people you know here we all are squandering resources because we happen to be born from the people who first kill the people to get the resources we act as if it's our god-given right to not have those resources even though it was murder you know murder um so yeah that's what i think not that i'm going to do anything about it i mean i'm driving a van full of mud from birmingham positions of power go with is fairly low on the power setting. It's like a 1 or 2 maybe, 1.5 in a scale that goes up to maybe 700. Um, that's the thing. So, um, yeah, I was on to the crown. Great acting, great performance, it's great drama. It's not real, great drama. Good accents, you know. I really like Matt Smith and Claire Foy in the role of um, the Queen and Prince Philip. The last lot ended up being quite good as well. I found it quite boring in the beginning, which is true to life. The royal family is monumentally boring, you know, when you get down to the brass tacks and thing. Um, in the strange way they speak, Philip, when he speaks to Diana, sort of you know, pushing your voice out through your teeth. It's a strange way of, of, of behaving, isn't it? And they have access to everything. You can get someone to teach them how to speak properly, but I guess they're not into it. I suppose if you speak like this, it just feels like an effort, you know? like it's difficult to speak i met philip once i was um, working as a waiter in it with a uh, a, uh, a company that did what they used to do was they'd hire you out to different establishments and you go and you'd waste tables and you'd serve wine you'd pour champagne you'd stand by the door with a bottle of wine um, or a bottle of champagne and you'd fill up people's glasses all night long and they just they'd look right through you because they were and um, um and, the, and the thing was Frogmore House, it was a meeting for the the Cotty's Ark 
restoration committee. So it was Prince Philip and a number of rear admirals and so forth at a big dining table. And before they arrived, we were briefed on, um, you know, we did, we did fuss about the setting tables and all that. We were briefed um, by not to approach Philip with wine. He didn't like wine. If you approach him with wine, he'd be insulted. Uh, naturally, it makes sense. And, um, and someone had to follow Philip at a certain distance with a, with a tray full of his favorite drinks, just in case he could see, you know, pop into his head. And they were, I think, there's a mint julep, uh, favorite drink of Dr. McCoy, Leonard McCoy from Star Trek. A dry martini shake and not stirred, of course. A whiskey that had been produced since the 50s. And the last remaining casks of the whiskey were only to be found in the uh, cellars of, of uh, Windsor Castle, which is, you know, I mean, nice work if you can get it. Work some work, you know, work. Um, and of course, tomato juice, which was his favorite drink, tomato juice. So we had to wait at the doorway. So someone has had that tray on standby to track the priest around this 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 house. So we're going to Victoria had her honeymoon. Windsor for a honeymoon, I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, and um, so someone else has to stand at the doorway with, with the tray with a single glass of tomato juice. Now, the last time they'd worked with Prince Philip, he complained after that the glass of tomato juice, the tomato juice had been too small. So um, we placed the tomato juice in a large wine vessel, um, like a red wine glass. So we sat there waiting. Eventually, a bit of commotion outside. The security guards passed us in. Finally, the, the prince himself enters quite suddenly, quite quickly, bent over, almost double, hands clasped behind his back, like Charles. And um, he said the words, you know, good evening, your royal highness, which is what I never thought I'd say in my life. Um, and his reply on seeing the class was, um, is it like a bucket? Is it like a bucket? And he was gone. Stormed and didn't even take the class. And that was, that was, um, my one encounter with Prince Philip. Of course, we, we had to hover around him at the table while they were eating and uh, fill his glass with water, tomato juice, and so forth. Um, so, yeah, the royal family. Um, yeah, people say, oh, but it's good for tourism. I know, but like nobody lives in Versailles. I, mean, I went to the Winter Palace once in, in, in St. Petersburg. Um, you know, and then. Um, their royal family is about. It's full of art. It's, it's one of the, the best museums in um, in Russia. You know, and the fact that the royal family are, are all dead and buried in unmarked graves matters little to the. Um, I mean, uh, you need it would still come to London if it wasn't for the royal family. Nobody goes to Spain to see their royal family. Maybe they do. Maybe they see them, but that's surely a, a tiny percentage. You're not going to see the royal family anywhere. I mean, nowadays we don't even use cash. We don't even see her on the on the physical currency. Um, so yeah, it's just madness. She has two birthdays as well, which is completely uncalled for, if you ask me. Um, and uh, ooh, a murmuration of birds. Um, people will go to Buckingham Palace. You know, people go to palaces. People go to interesting things. If you're into history, you will go to these things. You know, it's fascinating. You have to live that way now. Then again, like there's still billionaires out there who own all of England, you know, who aren't directly related to the world. I mean, they probably are related to the world, to be fair. Um, and they're no good as well. But Englanders do, you know. England isn't a very left leaning country, I think. Um, from the ground up. Um, like, I think there's been a call for, like, I'd love if there was, like, a left, a proper left alternative in this country. Again. Um, but I don't think the British public are predisposed to uh, to wanting such a thing. Uh, it would take a, a fairly seismic shift to get the British public against their their overlords, your ordinary Englishmen, for some reason. Which was a lot of deference to people like Boris Johnson and Michael Gove and Hemp Rabbit, Me Smog. Um, but you know, to me, they're just ghastly, ghastly demon, demonic people, you know, they're, they're kind of a story book. I never, thought, I never thought people like that existed for a to this country, I thought it was fiction, you know, 
like villains in The Patriot. Um, no, no, they're quite real. And they run the country. And they're unreachable because um, they don't live the lives we live. They live strange, posh lives of putting the clubs and ponies. So yeah, I'm in Ireland now. It's a chance at a left wing alternative. I think it's almost natural for Ireland to shift that way. You know, what is the Catholic Church? You know, the, the, the spirit of the Catholic Church, which, which thank God, has diminished a great deal in Ireland now. You know, look after everybody else. The community comes first. The community comes first. That's socialism, you know. It's about the people. We live 90% of our lives in capitalism, you know. I mean, we don't live in a, in a democracy. You know, our lives outside of work or may, might be a democracy, although we don't choose what's happening to our local area unless we put a petition and we try to fight against things, you know, unless we're part of the vested interest we don't get to vote for things. And in work, you know, we're not in control of, of who's in charge or what the work does or if we get fired or paid or none of that we have any control over. So that's not a democracy. You know, we vote for these politicians and for referendums and stuff and that is our, you know, that is apparently democracy and then they do what they want. So it's not a true democracy we live in. We live in a sort of a weird thing where Veneer of democracy, but most of it is, is run by businesses. And now, you know, even like Elon Musk who wants to set up his own law on Mars. He said that in, on Mars, um, they won't have to abide by any laws. They can set up their own laws and laws, the SpaceX laws. This is the court of SpaceX, you know. Um, they like their own laws that, that, that suit the business. I mean, what democracy will there be when when the government is SpaceX? You know, when when it's it's on the whims of the shareholder. You, you as a worker. You wouldn't have any rights, you wouldn't have any air to breathe. You'd be living inside a bubble on Mars, you know, working for Elon or his, his grandchildren, I guess. And uh, that's that's quite scary, you know. I think if we go out to Mars, we need to have an alternative where the people have a say in their own lives. Now, I know in America and places that, that that idea has been demonized by Reagan and an incredibly successful propaganda campaign of Hollywood over the last hundred years or so. And, but um, I'm talking I'm talking socialism like they have in, in Nordic countries you know, that works today, and it's about the people have a say in the running of their country and the running of their business. I mean, that's what we do for most of our lives is, 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 is work for these people. We may as well said that, you know, they pay them as little as they can, and they put up with it. You know, they complain. Someone goes on strike, and you have your classic English person going, oh, yeah, well, they shouldn't do that, should they, shouldn't complain, you should do what you're told, you should do what you're told, you should walk into those machine guns, you should just climb into that bash of barbed wire and just get your wrists cut open, because he told you to, he's better than me, he's got a nice suit, doesn't he? Look at him there with his nice suit. He can buy, he, he's, got, he's got access to oranges, ready access to oranges. He can peel and eat, and he gets the juice all over his face. So he's a better class of humanity than me. So if he tells me to walk over there and stab myself in the eye with, with you know, some sort of tiny toy soldier's gun, just whip it out of the toy soldier's hand and stab myself in the eye, then he knows better. I'm not going to complain. And even though, you know, he's living on billions and how much a pint of milk costs. But anyway, Crown's good. Um, it's a good show. Good cast. And, um, except in their handling of Irish affairs, I mean, they barely mentioned Ireland. Uh, the IRA are briefly mentioned just before Mountbatten is blown up. Sorry, spoiler for an actual event that happened a long time ago. Um, you know, even though. Britain doesn't care about Northern Ireland or has any awareness of what was going on in the North. It would have been a good way to educate them, especially now. It's a bad move, Peter Morgan. You should have... Maybe you don't know about it, I guess, yourself. You should have found out about it. Find out about the North. Why they're fighting. Bobby Sands, hunger strike, the civil rights movement, all of that. Stick that into the crowd today. Now, of course, you just got one little weird montage just before Mount Bat man responsible for the freaking millions dead in Pakistan when the partition happened. Um, it's blown up. Oh, oh no. 
Oh, sad. But anyway, that was a weird political rant, wasn't it? Um, but it's coming up on Christmas, and um, I'm going home, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to being surrounded by cats. Um, all the good shows I've watched lately that I recommend. I'd recommend The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. I could review those, actually. I don't think anyone has reviewed them. Not now. I've gone on for too long. Anyway, um, stay safe. I don't see you. Merry Christmas. And um, I hope for a happier year next year when we can um, work with jobs we want to work and see the people we want to see and hug the people and go to shows and travel and, and we'll find our own stresses in the time but, but I guess there'll be less there'll be less dead ends. <laughs>